What are we doing today? So first of all, welcome everybody who's on the Zoom call with us and you who are tuning in live on YouTube watching this. What the heck are we doing today? Well, it's our first ever, our first inaugural ceremony for the graduating class for Boot Camp 6, which is officially, I think, fall 2021, but it's Boot Camp 6. This means we've done this six times. We've not even celebrated who has come through the program and celebrated them and their, their wins and everything. But we also thought this would be a really great opportunity for the graduating class to pass on some knowledge. And so I want to I want to prep all of you who are part of the boot camp graduating class to think about one thing you wish you knew before you started. Just one thing. I want you to pass on that knowledge. That we're doing this in a non-traditional way, but I'd love for you to share one thing you wish you knew, or if that's too difficult, share one thing that you thought was most impactful to you. That's it. Not everybody has to do this, but I just want to prep you right now. And what we're doing today, and hopefully no one from boot camp one through five feels bad about this, but we're just starting. We're trying to figure things out here, trying to make this feel a little bit more official, that there's some ceremony and tradition that we're going to begin today. So I suspect certain things are not going to go perfectly, and that's okay. That's in the spirit of the future. It's like this idea that done is better than perfect, that perfect is the enemy of just getting stuff finished. So here we are. All right, so what I'm going to do is in a second, I'm going to introduce Kia Albrera, and she's going to be giving us a short little speech. This is super short, guys. This is not one of those long, drawn-out ceremonies where it's going to take hours. I don't want to bore you to death. We're going to introduce her, and she's going to give a little kind of like a uh, little speech here. And Kia, are you ready to do this with us? Kia? Hello. All right. Now. I hope so. <laughs> my, my, my clammy hands are... Sort of ready. <laughs> okay, very good. So here's what we're going to do. Okay, everybody unmute yourself. And we're going to give her a big round of applause. And we're going to kick it off. And just keep in mind, it's 1 a.m. Okay, it's 1 a.m. Kia's in the Philippines. Everybody give her a big round of applause. Please join me. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Kia, go ahead. All right. So let me do this graduation style. To the respected community <laughs> of the future pro group. Fellow bootcamp graduates, esteemed alumni, our acclaimed educators, and to the entire highly valued team behind the future, good morning. <laughs> so before I entered the business bootcamp, I was okay. I was okay with the normalcies that came with being a Filipino creative. I lived in what many other countries considered as a hotspot for cheap creative labor. I was okay with that. Um, in the past two or so years since we started serving more international clients, I was made to believe that I was only worth a certain rate and that if I went beyond that, I didn't know how to do business. A client actually said that to me. I was okay. This was normal to me. I was okay with how we were positioning our agency and our creative practice. We were surviving on discounts and burnout. We believed the inspirational promises of discount now, more projects later. Free work is your best marketing tool. And do this for exposure and you will never run out of clients. And I was okay. Not until I went through the eight weeks of intense mentorship with our esteemed educator, coach, and mentor, Chris, along with the careful guidance of the phenomenal Ben Burns and Carrie Green and all those who make up the Futures Business Bootcamp team, did I realize that this was not okay. In the course of this Eight wonderful weeks, I met my PPPs, Chris Bryan and Andrea Sumida, who's also in the Philippines. And we found that we were aligned in so many ways, including the many things that we fight against. I realized that this wasn't okay. So in the eight weeks, we started doing drastic changes, starting with acknowledging the fact that something was not right in the way that we were doing things. The earlier we accepted this, the more accountable we became. And we started pinpointing where our current limiting beliefs came from and started to debunk them. Um, we started clarifying our positioning, took our website down, and completely rebranded from scratch. I started being clear with who I was and who I wanted to serve in an educational capacity and found my jam on TikTok, doubled down on it, and started to enjoy what I was creating and who I was creating for. 
we relearned the way that we communicated. Uh, sorry, I we relearned the way that we communicated because I learned that because of my culture, I sucked at confrontation as evidenced by my exceptional box office hit performance of firing Chris Doe in call number three. <laughs> but I applied the, the lesson right away and it was nerve wracking and liberating at the same time. We learned how to better diagnose, how to better serve the sales, uh, we how to serve better that the sales practically close themselves. And we learned how to talk less and listen more, especially in, high, in, in handling objections. Our clients felt safe, they felt served. And for the first time, we had three straight clients who did not question our pricing. For the first time, we also experienced a client who had certain budgets in mind, but went ahead and found a way to match our price. What sorcery is this? And at the end of our services, our clients are left with a great view and a lasting impression of our services that more than a month after this bootcamp, we are fully booked until May and one third of our annual revenue was achieved in one month. These results sound amazing, but what I am treasuring the most is the intangible outcomes. The clarity that we now have in terms of what we wanted to do and why we do it, the courage to embrace the practice, the practice which, according to Seth Godin, offers no guarantees, but we do it anyway because it's the generous thing to do. And my goodness, this is how it feels like to do something that gives you joy, to create work that brings impact, and to have the sheer audacity to accept with the shaking hands a race to 100K on TikTok from your coach. But I'm proud to say that I'm no longer okay. I'm better and I will continue to be. And to my fellow graduates, may we move forward in the continuous pursuit of impactful creativity. And cheers to our growth and here's to the future. Wow, great job, Kia. You're, you're just more, you're more than okay. You're just more than okay. And I like that. I didn't have much of a shot racing you uh, to 100,000 because you had a massive lead on me. And then I found out the Philippines is the social media capital of the world. And then it was over. It was over. But I love it. I love that you've crossed 100,000 follower mark and all the success that you've had. Your story is one of many. And I just wanted to highlight you. I wanted to give you your flowers, as they say. That's a term I'm learning here. So congratulations. I wish I had something to hand over to you at this moment in time. But I'll you, take it. Just, I'll take we'll it do virtually. This. All right, here we go. Virtually, here you go. Take it. Oh, I'm so happy. Take it. Oh. All right. Heavy load off my hands here. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Here's what I like to do. Um, I want to let you guys know that some of you have the background that we sent. You don't have to, you don't have to wear the background, but it's our graduation background that our lovely designer Min had created. I see Diego's got it. Diego's wearing his colors. I like that because there are a couple other people here on the call who are not part of the graduating class cycle or edition number six. And that's okay. You don't have to do it. <laughs> don't do it. Only if it gives you joy, but you should have it. Okay. So without further ado, I just want to give you a couple other things. I want to mention a couple things here. Let me just switch this over here. Uh, soon you're going to be getting in the email your certificate your digital certificate. So Ben Burns is confirming everybody's name the way they want it to appear. You're going to be added to the alumni list on the website so people can confirm that, yes, you have been a part of the boot camp, that you're a graduate. So we're going to add you there. We're also going to send you a little ribbon that you can add to your, your social posts if you wish. And, and Min is working on that. And, and share that if you want. You don't have to do any of this because, you know, I have to admit, I barely made it to any of the graduations that I've been a part of. I skipped my high school graduation and I almost skipped my my art center graduation as well. I'm, I'm not for this formality, but I, I realize that there is a, some uh, some moment that we need to celebrate to to be able to memorialize this transition. Like if I had my tassel soon, we would be moving it over, but I'm not wearing my tassel today. All right. So what I'd like to do now is I would like to I would like to read off the list of graduates. Some some people are able to attend today. Some people have work. Some people a number of different reasons can't attend. So I'm going to try and highlight the people that I recognize that are here. I apologize in advance that I'm probably going to butcher some of your names. I just know it. 
And I can guarantee it'll be butchered if I gave it over to Ben Burns, that's for sure. Right, Ben? Now, Ben, I don't mean to put you on the spot, yeah. but we haven't heard from you in a little while. Do you want to say something on behalf of uh, the graduating class, Mr. Ben Burns? Oh, man, put me on the spot. No, I, I just want to say that I'm, I'm proud of every single one of you. I mean, I've seen transformation in this group like never before, and I cannot wait to see what you guys go out and do. Um, really looking forward to hearing back from you in six months and a year and seeing your progress and, and just the explosion of growth that I know is just around the corner. So good job, everyone. Good job indeed. Ben Burns and I are really proud of all of you, especially the ones that have been able to implement the concept that you've learned into your business, because what we seek to do is help you to transform your life and your business. And we realize something. You can't hire someone to do your push-ups for you. It means that you can enroll in all the programs, you can read all the books and attend all the workshops, every seminar in the world, watch every talk. But if you don't take action, it's not going to lead to anything. The gym is there, but you got to do the push-ups, the pull-ups, and you got to change your diet. And so we're so, so excited to see where you go um, as we keep track of you and, and as our lives kind of splinter apart a little bit and to be able to, to reconnect, <clears throat> hopefully in person at some point, to reconnect and, and share stories about the progress you've made and the changes you've made. This is what, this is what gets me up every single day. This is why we create the content. And I'm super excited because I want to get back into um, the, the gym, if you will. And I want to start working on more modules to expand the boot camp. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to read off some of the names. Uh, there are 49 graduates here. And it's organized in a counterintuitive way. We, we've alphabetized it by first name. So if you're, you know, we're going by first name here. So it's going to be all over the place, everybody. I apologize for that. That's how we're going to do it. Okay. All right, DJ Shammy D, are you ready? You yes. ready? And you guys, feel free to unmike and hoot and holler or do whatever you want, what your name is called. Do whatever you, whatever it gives you joy, okay? It's, it's like, this is your moment here. Okay, so first up, here we go. 49 graduates from Business Boot Camp Edition number six, VI, VI number six, okay? So first up, Alice Stankovic. Alice, congratulations. <laughs> Andrea Sumida. Andrea, where are you? Are you here, Andrea? Make some yeah. noise. Do something. Woo! Andrea. <laughs> I see you, Andrea. Congratulations. Next up, Andrew McNeil. Andrew McNeil. Okay. Andrew. <laughs> Brendan McCaffrey. Brendan, where are you? Hey, I'm here. Yay. There you <laughs> go. Thank Making you. some noise. Woo woo! That's how we 10 do it. kilos already. <laughs> okay. Next up, Brent Wallace. Brian. Brent. Brent. <laughs> Brian Ayala. Cam Nielsen. Kara Lackey. Chad Abel. Shamim Phillips. Chris Bryan. Christopher Undy. Karina Grandma. Craig Hines. Craig, where are you? <laughs> right here, man. There you are. Pause, but he's not. Congrats, Craig. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Next up, Chris Chow. Doc Young Lee. Daniel Cody, where are you? Woo! Where's Daniel? Daniel, make some noise. Woo! Where are you? I'm Daniel. here. Woo! <laughs> there he is. All right, all right. <laughs> I think everybody needs to do something. Okay, Diego Navarro. Diego. Where you at, Diego? There he is. All right, Woo! all right, two hands up. Woo, woo. Raise the roof. All right. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher this one, Dora Panayotova. Oh my gosh, that was a hard one, Dora. Sorry, I apologize. Dustin Hopkins, Emily Dustin. Johnston, and Fabian Maduyano. Fabian, <laughs> Fabian, where are you? I probably butchered that. I'm so sorry, Fabian, <laughs> with the sweet mustache. Congratulations. Woo -woo. Okay, Gregory Benko, Idris Talib Solomon, 
Uh oh, this one has so many syllables. Sorry, as a monosyllabic Vietnamese person, I apologize in advance. Ihor Huya Drudski. Yeah, you made it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I almost swallowed my tongue doing that one. Ihor, congratulations. Woo! Yes. Oh, man, with the awesome tats, too. All right. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I love that. Jacob Wagler. Jacob, where are you at? Thank you. All right, all right. There you are. There you are. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Jacobus Ewis. Or I don't, I don't, I don't know how to say your last name. I'm sorry. Jacobus. Um, Jamie Jordan Frau. Josiah Dearn Kirk. <laughs> then I should have had you do this. And of course, the amazing and lovely Kia Abrera. Kia, where are you at? Kia! Yeah. You know, yes, yes. Woo! All right, all right. Luke Gell. Okay, here we go. Marcel, I've met in person and in real life. Marcel Schubert. Marcel, where yes. are you, big man? Nice to see you. <laughs> good to Congrats, see you, Marcel. buddy. How are you? I'm enjoying it. I'm good. How about you? I'm doing good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Congratulations, buddy. I'm the shy guy. <laughs> you are the shy guy. You're the gentle giant. <laughs> Marcel Schubert. Okay, next up, Marcus Blanke. Marcus, where are you at? Here I am. Hello. Yes, Thank hello, you. hello. Congratulations, Marcus. Good to yes, see you. Yes, amazing. Amazing, <laughs> exactly. Okay. Oh, Martha's not here. Martha Christina Garza. Matthew Shell. Mariah Riona. Mariah, where are you at? Hi. Mariah's here. Hello, there she is. There she is. Hi, Mariah. Hi. Congratulations. Yeah. You and Ben Burn have the same decor. Nothing. <laughs> 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 Minimalism at its best, everybody. Nara Thompson. Is Nara here? No, oh, okay. Nope. Patrick Lowry. Patrick, where are you at? There he is. <laughs> you got a little buzzer there? Patrick Lowry. There you are. Beautiful. Stay productive. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Adding some additional sound effects. Okay. Russ Abbott. Ryan Walker. Ryan? That, are you here? I think. Uh, there you are. Is that you? <laughs> yes. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. <laughs> all right. All right. Congratulations, Ryan. Thanks. Okay. Um, let's see here. Sham Shapidi. Daniel Adermola. Okay, here she is. Sarah Feinstein cutting the rug. Sarah, where are you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You want to thank your mom? Thanks, mom. Thanks, dad. Thank you, Crystal. We believe in you. I love you all. All right, thank you. Simon Paquette. Simon, where are you? Hey guys. Hey Simon. And with your cat, your cat's here to love you too. Yeah, she's been here the whole way. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Wonderful. Uh, co pilot the cat. Okay. Tara Kelly. Tem Nimeganov. Tyler Wessel. Vincent Arcon. Congratulations, everybody. So here's the list in case I butchered everybody's name. There you all are. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Hopefully we got all your spelling right. All right, all right. So now I'm going to switch back over to this part, which is I want to help pass the baton of knowledge if possible. I want to pass it on. And if you want to raise your hand to share one thing, just one thing that you wish you knew prior to um, attending the boot camp or one thing that you found to be the most helpful to you. Okay, I got one hand up already. So Daniel, take it away. Well, I think one of the, I mean, you kick it off the first module is about the disruption of limiting beliefs. And I think that was a really powerful framework and it just sort of changed. I mean, it said it set everything on a new trajectory for me. So I think that was a critical piece for me. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing, Daniel. All right. Anybody else want to share one thing? Let me go to the gallery mode here so I can see all your faces. As everybody's like, oh, I didn't know we're going to have to say something. It's okay if you don't want to say something. Fabian, thank you very much for raising your hand. Um, thank you. I wish I didn't 
think that, that I had to buy like a camera to tell better stories. And in reality, I mean, I wish I would have just, you know, invested in myself and in this course before I bought gear. So <laughs> tell me a little bit more about that, Fabian. W- were you concerned that you needed to have fancy gear to make content or to join the, the boot camp or what? No, I think I think it's just kind of like a stigma, you know, where everyone thinks, oh, you know, this gear is going to make my shots better, my story better, when in reality, like, um, I needed to embrace and, you know, let go of limiting beliefs where I'm already a good storyteller. I just need to practice on my craft and it really doesn't matter what I own or what I have. Because if I have the right client and I'm able to land the right client, then really like you know, um, budgets are for that stuff. So Mm, I love that. Thanks for sharing. This ties into something that I recently posted on LinkedIn and someone said, Ansel Adams said the most important piece of equipment is the eight inches behind the camera. And that's you, it's your brain, it's your vision. It's how you frame things. It's how you see and manipulate light. It's how you make people feel so they're comfortable in front of the camera. So you get the best of them so that they become radiant. That's you. That's what you bring. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much for sharing that. Okay. Now we're moving over to Diego. Diego, you're up next. Go ahead. Well, I wish I knew I didn't have to have a full plan in order to enjoy the bootcamp because I hesitated for two bootcamps before the one I took. And I finally took the shot and I was like, okay, I'm just never going to be ready for the bootcamp. So I'm just going to take it. And it was massive. From the first model, it was impressive, the, the outcome that it brought to my business. So I guess I would have no, no, I wish I would have known not to be so hesitant about it and just go for it. Mm. I, I have a question for you. What got you over your hesitancy? Because you said you had eyeballed this thing for two cycles before you pulled the trigger. So what kind of pushed you over the edge? Well, if it was a year of many changes. I moved from Mexico to Barcelona. So I kind of was starting new. So I was like, okay, if I wasn't ready before, I'm not going to be ready in a while if I want to be in a position. So it was that and the last minute pro group promotion that pushed me over. And I was like, okay, I got to do it today because if not, I'm not going to get it. And I just paid it full. I see. That's a note for our marketing team. (laughs) Scarcity, you got to just drive the scarcity point. Oh, and the program has a lot of value too. So yeah, it was well worth it. I appreciate it, Diego. Okay, thank you very much. All right, let's move over to Patrick. Patrick, what do you want to share? Uh, Oh, there's every module had amazing nuggets of of gold that really transformed how I approached my business. So I mean, I, I feel like the first module with uh, mindset was was incredibly huge. But um, for a practical application, uh, being able to communicate with other creatives, uh, giving briefs, and then uh, working on my delega- delegation skills have been invaluable in, in really pushing my business forward. Um, so I, I didn't expect for that to be as powerful as it was, but uh, especially the past couple um, past couple gigs, it's it's been a life changer for me. Wonderful. And I have to just quickly mention the bokeh on your camera is just creamy, as they would say. (laughs) The kids would say it's very creamy (laughs) in a non-sexual way, everybody. It's very creamy. All right. Um, I want to share something with you. I I just got back from hanging out with members from Entrepreneurs Organization, which is a bunch of very successful entrepreneurs. They have 15,000 members throughout the world. And the average A member has over a $5 million business. That's what they generate every year, the average person. And I was sitting next to this gentleman. His name is Pancho. And I asked him, "Uh, you've been a part of EO for 13 years. What's the biggest thing that you've learned? Because I just want to lean into what they're sharing with each other, what successful multimillionaires talk about. He says, this sounds really simple, Chris, but it was delegation. I thought I had to do all the work myself. I was the best at everything, so I did everything. And then meeting fellow EO members, he started to see how they ran their business, and he's like, that was the game changer. There's a little test that you may want to run on yourself. And the test is something like this, is if you uh, got the most amazing opportunity in the world to travel for a year, would you be able to step away from your business and have it survive without you? 
could you truly enjoy this once in a lifetime travel around the world experience without having to check in with the team constantly? Could you be present to enjoy every moment that you were there? And this is what you want to do uh, in order to build a business that can survive without you, but also to understand that you're supposed to design your business so that you have freedom to choose what you want to do. You could choose to do nothing. You could choose to do critical roles in the company, but it's a choice. It's not by default that you have to do everything. So I want you to just think about that, everybody. Whether you're part of this alumni group or not, or you plan to enroll, think about what it means to be an entrepreneur and how you have to start reframing the tasks that you're doing to survive without you. So you have the freedom and flexibility to pursue what you want. That's the definition of wealth to me, to be able to do what you want with who you want for as long as you want to do it. Okay, thanks for your share. We're going to move over to Jacob. Jacob, you have the mic. Yeah, thanks, Chris, for just sharing that. That was really, really great. Um, what I learned that was most effective for me was to start taking myself and my business out of the picture and stop selling to the client, but just help the client grow their business because they have problems that they need to solve. And I just need to start helping rather than selling. Mm. So that was a reframe of how you approach your client relationships. And have you noticed any differences when you started to treat them like I'm here to serve you? I'm not here to sell. Oh, massive differences. They start to trust you. They start to open up with you in a very real way. Mm. So it's kind of counterintuitive, right? We think we need, we need to sell. We got to close the sell. So we're distracted in the conversation. We're motivated by our own agenda, our need to make money, our desire to do this project or work with this client. And then we don't serve the client well at all. And they can sense this. They can feel it in you. And then when you show up, like, I'm here to serve. I may be a good fit. I might not be a good fit. You may or may not be able to afford me. I, I might not even know what the answers are, but I'm really interested in learning about your business, what the challenges are, and you serve them to the best of your ability. And it's this weird thing. They want to buy even more. It's like the analogy that we make. It's like the thing that you can have, you want more of. The thing that you can't have, you want more of. And so we we also learned that someone who's really needy or pushy, it's very, uh, it's like repelling. It repels people. It's repulsive. It pushes people away. So one of the coolest techniques that you can use, and, and people think that you have to be an extroverted alpha type salesperson to make sales, is to whisper. When you whisper, people lean in. And it's the same in sales. So instead of like pushing, 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 you pause, you stay silent, you ask a few questions, and you let the other person lean in because they want to hear what you have to offer. It's the best way to disarm your client, to let them know you have their best intentions at heart. So thank you so much for sharing that, Jacob. I'm glad that you were able to grab that and use it because it can change all of your relationships, whether it's business or it's personal. Thank you. Yeah, thank All you right. so much. Mm, thank you. Okay. Sarah, you're up next. Right. Um, I think I'll focus on the most impactful thing. And for me, that was learning about voice and understanding how powerful it can be. And I just like assumed because I'm usually like a pretty enthusiastic, friendly person that that was kind of like all I needed. But I would often come up against these situations where it felt like there was like maybe something that needed to be resolved and I didn't necessarily know how to go about it and like the kind of like enthusiastic friendly part of me couldn't navigate that well and it was because it was like the only way of communicating in my toolbox that I had so being exposed to different tones of voice and different like frameworks of how to be able to kind of like order your sentences and have conversations was like such a huge like light bulb moment and like it is so powerful and I feel like I just am so much more well equipped to have almost any conversation that needs to to be had and so that felt really empowering it felt like there was a missing piece and I'd been like completely not aware at all that voice had the power it did so that felt really cool. Thank you very much, Sarah. Sarah, may I, may I put you on the spot? Okay. <laughs> she says <Yeah>. hesitantly. <laughs> okay. Okay. When, when people are listening to this and they don't understand the incoming students or the ones that might be thinking about this in the future, when you talk about tone of voice, 
Can you demonstrate some of the different tones of voice that you may have that you possess now? Okay. All right. You right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, okay. Let's do this. All right. But you, okay. So to start with, we have that the smiling while you speak. So, Hey, Chloe, um, you know, that sounds really interesting. I'm not sure if that might be like the best solution to go with, but I'm totally open to giving it a try. You know, let's, let's, let's give it an attempt. Um, wow. I'm so open to them. I'm, 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 I'm grateful that you're going to consider some of these challenges I've thrown at you, Sarah. Thank you. Okay. Tell us what you're doing right there. Okay. So that is speaking with a smile and kind of like bringing the voice up to kind of like that friendly, like higher place to kind of maybe like disarm a situation and to like lighten the mood when you're like maybe having a bit of like a hard conversation to just, yeah, make it feel not so serious in that way. Wonderful. We, we all know this already. We know that what you think influences your body. Therefore, you can read people's body language. So someone who's like, I'm really interested in doing this deal, but they're closed up, their arms are crossed and they're hunched over a little bit because they're protecting their, their vulnerable parts. You know, like, no, they're not ready for this deal. What we don't know too much, and Amy Cuddy talks about this in her TED Talk, which is the body can influence your mind, your thinking. So when you smile externally, even though people can't see you, it starts to change the way the words sound coming out of your mouth. It might even change the words that you select. Uh, Chris Voss talks about this. He talks about the mirror neurons. When you see someone laughing, you can't help but to laugh inside, even though externally you're not laughing. So this is a way of putting and or priming yourself to be more positive so that you can talk about things that are kind of challenging to hear, right? And people are like, oh, okay, Sarah's really thinking about it. Uh, this is not doesn't have to be a confrontation, so it's beautiful. Well done. Now, I have to say, your default voice is naturally very happy and, and optimistic and bright. And so it was kind of nice to see, like, oh, there's there's levels to that. And I just saw you shift a little bit. But for a lot of people who speak in a more monotone voice, a deeper, darker voice, definitely think about smiling when you're talking and just practice that. Wonderful. Can you demonstrate one other voice that you may or may not have? Okay, there's like the late night DJ FM, and what was the other one? That's it. That's it. That you can do that. That's, one. That was the other one. Okay. Yeah. All right. This one's hard for me because I mm -hmm. am such a high voice person. But okay, give me a prompt of like wh why I need to use this voice. Okay, so I'll I'll give you what a client might say. Hey, Sarah, I'm I'm concerned that uh, we're not going to hit the deadline, given that we're just a week out, and it feels like a lot more than a week's worth of work. Hey, Chris, I totally understand that, you know, you're feeling maybe a little bit of panic, but I want you to remember why you hired me. And I want you to remember that you trusted me and engaged in this relationship. And I want you to know that I have the processes in place to ensure that we are going to meet the agreed upon deadline. So at this point, I just want you to try and, you know, take a, take a seat, relax. I got you. Wonderful job, Sarah. Woo! You're right. You're right. So it's a little bit difficult, a little bit more difficult for you because your natural um, mm -hmm. tone of voice is, is more uplifting. It's bright. And so for you to bring it down now, I would demonstrate because I have a fancy microphone what the FM DJ voice might sound like. I want you to imagine you're driving along the coast or just this beautiful windy road with a canopy of trees above you. It's a beautiful moonlit night and you're just like feeling the warm breeze of a spring night wherever you are and you're listening to some like K-Jazz 101 or something like that. And the person's going to come on. They're going to mm -hmm. say, we're hoping you have an amazing night with the warm air hitting your face. I'm going to play three songs for you that remind me of my childhood. And so you bring it down low and slow and you do it really deliberately. It calms most people down. I love that in this really quick impromptu role play, you acknowledge the person's concern and you labeled it. So it's something that we talk about. So when someone's like, I'm concerned, Sarah, that we're going to not be able to hit our deadline, the first thing that you need to do is you have to address that. So you kind of mirror back to them what, what is being said. 
Chris, it sounds like you're concerned about hitting the deadline. And you just take a breath. You put a lot more pauses into it. So wonderful. Good job. Thank you very much for demonstrating, Sarah. And I, I wish you the, the just continued success and continued applications of the principles that we've learned here and that uh, it, it starts to transform your relationships with your clients. Thank you very much. Thank Sarah. You. Yeah. Thanks. And thanks for like shaking it. All right. Next up is Andrea. Andrea. Hey, Chris. So Hi. I don't know where to start, but um, business bootcamp was really life um, changing for me. I know also for Kia, I always tell this to Kia. Um, like what Patrick said, every module you learn a lot of new things. And I think the two um, main takeaways that I got from the bootcamp um, was first, um, amateurs um, give advice, experts diagnose. diagnose. That was my first quote. And second is you're not in a proposal um, business. So um, I've never been so confident like to talk about um, money with clients and really diagnose and learn and find the major problem. And this really opened a lot like crazy opportunities for our agency right now. And I'm so excited that we're also rebranding and really closing like bigger projects. So I'm, I'm super happy. And like what I said on my Instagram post, this was like the best um, investment that I made in my business. So I'm going to cry, <laughs> but it's true. Like um, it really changed my life and my business. So thank you um, so much to to you, Chris, and the whole teacher team for for doing this. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, thank you so much. I love hearing that you it what you got from this was confidence. Yes. Like if I could bottle it, <clears throat> I would sell it. I'd be a very rich person right now. But the key to your success, there's two things. There's two components to your success and whatever you do in your life. The belief in yourself, which will drive every other decision, and you taking action. They're kind of tied together. And so here's here's a little kind of um, cycle, if you can imagine in your mind. Uh, when you try something new, you have a new experience, and you learn to be a little less afraid, which gives you the courage to try something new. So you have a new experience. So people are stuck at that first part, which is they're not ready to try something new. And they're, they just stay there for a really, really long time. And the, throughout my life and the people that I've coached and the people that have come through boot camp, the ones that are willing to try something new, it starts to reprogram the self story, the story that you tell yourself, the inner dialogue, the inner monologue, right? And so we start to change and we reprogram that and can do wonderful things for us that when we're standing in front of the client, we don't feel like we have to be apologetic or they're doing us a favor by hiring us or that what we do is not worth it. We don't need to apologize that for anymore. And when they ask us to prove ourselves, we just politely decline. We ask them more questions when they're seeking answers so that we help them gain clarity. All those things will start to make you feel like you can take on anything. That's the feeling that I have. And that's the feeling I wish to impart on all of you. Thank you very much, Andrea. Okay, Dustin, you're up next. Thanks, Chris. Uh, so talking about that confidence, uh, from watching your free content, you finally gave me the content to charge double what I'd normally charged. And it worked. And I was like, oh, well, now I have to roll this into a business boot camp, obviously. So uh, I got in and I immediately felt overwhelmed. Actually, I felt really out of place. Everybody was so uh, much further than I was. And they were all creatives that were there to like work on their business. And I, I felt like I was more coming from this like business side, trying to be a creative, you know. And uh, I hopped on a call with Ben Burns, who helped me a lot with reframing um, kind of my role and... Uh, you know, the biggest thing I'm, I'm walking away from, I mean, besides obviously the sales techniques that have helped me close two more clients since graduation, um, just everything that that's, you know, been blessed for, for my business. Um, but knowing that I can be um, the person on the team that supports creatives, you know, that I can be the person that negotiates higher so everybody can eat, um, that I can be a part of that creative process without 
um, you know, being the creative. Um, so, so thank you guys very much. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. You said something there I want to highlight. Uh, this is a line from Simon Sinek. He says, oftentimes when we talk about leadership, it's about who's in charge. And he says, it's about who's in your charge. A big shift there because it's not about jogging for power. It's not about charging clients the maximum amount of money so that you can sit on your mattress of money. It's really about saying, can I afford to pay my team more? Can I give them more time off? Can I support them by having, instead of them doing three jobs, having them just do one job? So there's a lot of arguments, and I'm going to have this debate at some point in the near future about why you should charge less and why you should charge more. Let's make a real case for either, and let's see where we net out. So for me, it's it's clear where I net out on this. It's, there's no illusion as, uh, oh, he thinks the other thing. But when you do this, you can help more people. It's no coincidence that when you're on an airline, and I just flew back from Mexico, they, they do the same thing, right? They like, in the event of an emergency, oxygen mask will drop down, put it on your face first, and then help others. That order is very significant. Because if you try to help others, because your instinct might be to protect your loved ones next to you, but you're going to do them no good and yourself no good if you're passed out on the floor without oxygen. So this is why we do what we do. We run a successful business and then we go help other people. We help the people in our immediate family and then our friends and then that ripples out. Because every person that you help, I think helps another person. And I'll, I'll, I'll point it out like this. For everybody who's still reluctant to to ask for a little bit more money is this, is that you, you know one of the biggest causes of stress and, di- and divorce, in at least here in America, is financial problems. Because when you don't have enough, it's just like you can't go out, you can't take a vacation, you don't have any flexibility or freedom. So when you're able to charge a little bit more and pay people who work with you a fair salary, you're potentially taking away at least one cause of stress for them. And it's worth fighting for. It's worth having that battle. And it's not a battle when you learn how to do it. So thank you very much, Dustin, for sharing. Love the whole beard and the mustache. I feel like you should be in a movie right now. <laughs> Thanks. Really. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, Ihor, you're up next. Thank you to be on stage. I will really, really be really quick. I have really to go like in 10 minutes for another client call. And usually I don't do this, but my country has a very special situation these days. And that's why I have to work lately. But I would love to start with kind of goals I had before I joined the business bootcamp. So I remember our call, like uh, I would say it was a sales call before before a business bootcamp when you when you mentioned Ashley Smithers and said, guy, she's charging 400000 for a deck. You should take this to account. And I was like, well, I was charging 2000 And I thought I am like super, super expensive. Now I'm charging 30000 I am thinking I am cheap. Thank you very much. Love I that. Really, yeah. Oh my That's gosh. Awesome. So good. Okay, we're hearing all kinds of stories about confidence, about communication, about how to have relationships with clients, not trying to sell, but serving first. We've heard things about tone of voice. And now we're just hearing, you know what? Once you find out what other people are charging, you start to realize, man, my perception of expensive is way out of skew. It just is. And I recently put out this piece of information. I said, I want you all to consider this. When you're negotiating against yourself, when you're like thinking, can I ask for another $1,000 or $2,000 or whatever it is you're going to ask for, just remember in most large corporations, they spend more on a lunch meeting than what you're asking for. And and not much gets done at a lunch meeting. There's a lot of uh, n- necessary things, but also wasteful things that happen in a corporation. Just just think about that. When they invite 20 executives over, and they're, they're reserving a space, a hallway, and they're having the meal catered. They're spending thousands upon thousands of dollars to have that. And when you're sitting there thinking, I don't know if they can, uh, I, I don't know if they can pay $2,000 for this. Just think about that. And what you're feeding them is way more nutritious than what they're going to be eating for lunch. And it won't give them, give them a food coma either. Ben, did you see how I just slipped in that metaphor like that? No, that was I'm pretty slick. Smooth. That was pretty <laughs> slick right in there. You know what's really smooth too? DJ Shammy D. So you know what we're going to do now? I just want to say some parting words. 
we're going to blast out with some music and probably have this whole thing copyright stricken <laughs> 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 on YouTube. So in a, in a minute or so, DJ Shammy D is going to just blast us off with some music. We're going to end the live stream, but I encourage uh, the boot campers to hang out with us because we're going to chat for a few minutes and then we'll say goodbye. If you have a big client meeting to go to, go do your thing. That's more important than hanging out with us, I think. All right. So I just want to say this. Uh, I think it was like four years ago, maybe three years ago, when, when Ben Burns and Matthew Encina, who's no longer with the company, had said, Chris, we need to put together a comprehensive program to share what it is that you've learned in the last 20 plus years so that we can help other creative people. And at first I was like, um, do I really want to do this? Because this is a lot of work. How do I consolidate all this information? And they just reminded me, this stuff that you know, that you take for granted, that you're you're dropping on us all the time it can really impact a lot of people. And so with their encouragement and a little bit of pressure, Mr. Ben Burns, you know who you are, we sat down, we mapped out the seven weeks. Originally, this was a seven-week program. And then we heard you, we felt a different pain point, a new challenge, so we added an eighth module. And I'm sure over time, it's going to continue to grow and swell. But really, hearing your stories today, and I'm so glad that we got to do this, really encourages me to keep doing this thing. We fight the good fight, and we want to try to transform one service professional business at a time. And that's why you're here. So on behalf of the entire future team, for uh, for, our, for Ben Burns, uh, for um, Carrie Green, who helped us organize this thing together, for Jonah, who's cutting this, I just want to thank you for, tr- uh, for trusting us, for taking that leap of faith. It means the world to me. And hearing your stories and your success really fuels me up every single day. So thank, thank you. Thank you very much, boot campers. And I... I, I, I want to encourage you to continue to hang out with previous boot campers and the new class that's coming in. I want to create this really super powerful network of people. With that, DJ Shammy D, you ready to do your thing? And everybody is tuning in the live stream. Thank you very much. Remember, the past, you're not defined by your past. The future is what you make it. Bye, everybody.